Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a uh, video for you from a hotel room here in scenic Portland, Oregon. I'd show you what's out the window, but it's a bunch of air ducting, and you're not interested in that. So this is actually the prettiest view I can muster. Anyways, um, I am here to visit Gerber, not the baby food people, the the, 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 the gear people. Um, And this is actually kind of a, a, a longish story. I ended up meeting unintentionally with them, at the, the sitting down with their team at the Blade Show Banquet, because that was where there were open seats and whatnot. Um, and uh, we ended up having dinner and we ended up talking. And I got to talking with their lead of design, with one of their product marketing people. And um, after looking at the fastball and being impressed with the design, certainly, um, I uh, we kind of kept talking. And they actually invited me out here to come check out their factory, um, to come talk with them, to talk about the future of Gerber about their, and their future on the collective side of the cutlery market, which I really get the impression they're trying to come back into. Now, of course, this could all be an elaborate ruse. Maybe I'm going to walk in, find a bunch of critical reviewers all in one place, Red Wedding style, in which case this will serve as my final video, or maybe I'll end up in concrete galoshes at the bottom of the Willamette. We really can't be, you know, for sure, but at the very, very least, I'm hopeful that this is going to be an interesting learning experience for me. So first off, full disclosure, I gotta be honest. They flew me up here. They covered airfare. They covered my hotel. Um, I, I told them that I'm gonna talk about, but in exchange, well, there's not much in exchange. They're teaching me a bunch of stuff, but I told them I'm gonna talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this visit. I'd provide an honest account. Aside from confirming with them that there were no like sensitive areas of the factory in my in my filming, etc., they don't have any editorial control over the process. They said I don't even have to make a video if I don't want to. Hopefully, I'll want to, but well, and I'm making one. So, uh, um, but anyways, I also let them know that this wouldn't affect future reviews, or at least I'll do my best not to let it do so. And we're talking very carefully just to make sure that they're not, you know, at all concerned. Well, they may be concerned, but that they, they don't feel like they've got any control over what I say on any of these matters here. I, and I had them confirm even that they're, they're okay with my discussing this in the light that it is. Because Gerber is a company that has had a really storied history in the knife world. And then for the last 10 years or so, they've had a very dark time where they focused in an area that was very much not interesting to collectors, where quality slipped for a little while. Uh, and uh, so I, I want to make sure that they were okay with my telling the story as it is, and they seem to be. Honestly, they've been really accommodating and open here. And although you might expect that at some level, I think they've gone a little above and beyond in that regard. And that makes me feel comfortable doing this. Um, You know, this is, to me, a beautiful thing. And this is a, a chance for me to learn things, right? To see elements of the production side that I don't generally see sitting, say, in my freaking, you know, <laughs> in my office doing videos. Um, and it's something I'd love to do with more makers. I mean, uh, Gerber came first because they asked first. But um, honestly, uh, th th this is something I'd love to do. I'm, I know there are a bunch of other folks in Portland, by the way, who are up here, like uh, Benchmade, uh, Leatherman, a bunch of other folks, CRKT, are all based up here. But it didn't feel right for me to go visit other people on this in the same trip that Gerber paid for. That seems tacky to me. And besides, I don't have much time anyways. But anyways, um, th th that's what's going on. Up here. This, uh, th th this should be fun. For me, personally, I'm going with a few different goals in mind. I mean, to start with, I want to learn, right? I want to see how their knives are being made in their factory at this kind of scale. I want to see how a factory like this is working. I want to watch their assembly people at work learn more about how the business, frankly, works at their scale. I mean, not that all of that is super relevant. At the end of the day, what matters most is what comes out of the box and into the consumer's hands, and that's always going to be the area that I want to try and represent. But at the same time, the more I can know about the process, the better I can do my job, at least in my estimation. I'm also very curious curious about their future. I mean, Gerber is making very, very strong claims that they are coming back. And I want to know how they're planning to do that, what, they're, what they've what they got planned. I want to talk. I want to ask questions. I want to ask tough questions. Um, you know, sit people down and say, okay, guys, you're coming back, but uh, talk to me about your plan here. And frankly, the building the connections is good because I don't represent all of the community. Frankly, some would argue I don't represent much of it at all. But nevertheless, I can be a voice for some people and I think it's a good thing that they hear from an external perspective because I know it's very easy, even in my own life, to get, get caught in your own echo chamber, to, to, to be an external voice for them to say, you know, oh, that's really great. Or, uh, yeah. that, 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 nonetheless, I mean, if, they, if that can be helpful, 
helpful, then th th that's a beautiful thing. But anyways, I'm really not sure what's going to come of the day. They've sent me an agenda. It's uh, pretty entertaining. There's a factory tour. There's a section called Build Your Own Fastball that's a little bit cons <laughs> I have no idea. But anyways, it should be fun. Um, I'm going to try and take some footage where I can. Um, of course, I, I'm limited to just, you know, I, I've got a freaking cell phone over here, so that, that, that's kind of where I'm at. Not exactly a high uh, high budget production value kind of person here. But nevertheless, um, that, that, that's what I got going on. I hope this will be interesting to you, and uh, have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. Hey everybody, Nick here, and I'm back, and I'm actually alive. That's that's good, right? I one hundred percent sure. I, I'm not at the bottom of the Williamette River right now, so I'm actually pretty happy with how today went. That that's that's a joke. I'm actually very happy with how today went because honestly, that went a lot better and frankly a little differently than I expected it to. Um, although I'd had some reassurances from them ahead of time that this wasn't going to be a hard sale sort of thing, there was a part of me that was worried, right? That, you know, I'd show up and I'm just in a room with a bunch of their marketing people and they're just trying to convince me that Gerber is the best thing ever and trying to make, you know, uh, trying to make me go home and say a bunch of things to you guys. That was not remotely what happened. Um, and in fact, it was sort of in a lot of ways the opposite of that. And I'm really happy about that. That went about as well as I could hope. Um, just to give you a sense of what kind of went on. Um, you know, we started off the factory tour and that was pretty cool. I'll insert some clips of that someplace where it makes sense. Um, but nevertheless, um, and that was really interesting in a bunch of different ways. You know, I got to see things like, for instance, um, the, the sheer amount of sheet steel that these guys go through. So this rack shows all of their various sheet steels that they then put onto the laser cutter that I'm going to show you in a second there. But those are, you know, $36,000 worth of S30V on one of those little pallets. It's actually really impressive the amount of steel they have there. Laser cutter that does a bunch of those sorts of things. Holy crap, this thing's cool. I got to see them, uh, you know, all of their various approaches for, um, you know, uh, grinding the blades, flattening the blades, etc. So, like, this is shot inside their factory. You see in back there one of their surface grinding machines. Here's another one of them. That's a calendar, in case you weren't aware. And then over here, we're getting into some of their, uh, their, their automatic grinding stations. This is grinding the blade tangs on some of their multi-tools. Cool stuff. And, you know, I got to do that with, uh, you know, walking around with the, the, the product manager, and I'm sorry, I'm getting the titles wrong here, no doubt, but like uh, lead product manager, design lead, uh, the, the, one of their product engineers, maybe lead project engineer, I'm not sure. And then the factory manager, uh, all sitting there and just talking with me about what's going on here and talking with me very candidly. Like, okay, for instance, they brought up, you know, all oh, that fastball you had, that had an issue and what the, that issue tends to come from this machine going wrong in this particular way and then that adds up because when it gets this machine, it, you know, very detailed sort of explanations about some of the things that can go wrong. And in, in that case, what they're actually doing to fix it, the very expensive steps that they're taking to try and address that in the future, you know, different machines, things like that. I mean, that was actually really interesting. And to see sort of how all of the various elements of not only the knives, but the multi-tools are being made. That was cool in just a, you know, how it's made sense, because I love that freaking show. And I got to see it for something I actually find it really cool, like knife making. That was cool. So I, I appreciated that very much and seeing sort of all the different stages. One of the things that I actually appreciated a lot was the uh, the fact that they, their factory was very complete. What I mean by that is that, you know, there's always the fear that a bunch of stuff is being, you know, imported or brought in from outside and, and that really it's more assembly. But no, that wasn't the case. I mean, I watched the laser cutter cutting out blade blanks. I saw the grinding machines grinding blades. You know, what, what, looked at what was coming to the assembly stations and seeing all of those things being made. This, I, I was very, very impressed by just how much of this stuff is being made right there in that building. How much, how many components of that are, are being made right there? I mean, they, they, they say made in the States, but that means many different things to many different people. And that was, that was kind of nice to see. Um, it was also cool to see some of the, the, the technology there. They had, you know, a, a, a robot. It was, you know, uh, surface grinding the end of the, um, the, 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 the plier heads for one of the, the center drive little guys, or maybe it was one of their other tools, but still, that was really cool. Like a robotic arm freaking with a grinding belt in there. That's awesome. 
So this fancy robotic arm is actually taking heads for multi-tools and grinding them to a to, to smoothness on this little grinding wheel here. So you can see here, it's just doing this in a repeatable way. It's actually, it's really freaking neat. It's kind of got a Skynet charm to it. I'll certainly give you that, but it was awesome to see. Um, you know, got to see them, you know, doing the shopping, etc. interesting to see this process and to see exactly where this goes wrong. See the level of organization that's required to make knives on the scale that they're making them, you know, with the number of parts, etc. That was actually quite neat. Independently got to meet some of the assemblers, etc. Just sort of see the process and they were very open. They were very candid about it. Like sometimes this problem happens. This is, you know, this particular area is what can cause that. This is what we try and do to fix it. Or, you know, talking about the quality control process at every step. They were very open, very candid, and they, they understand that they're, they're working on these issues, but they're talking about how they're working on it. I was very happy about that. So that was cool. Um, we then, uh, well, at lunch and whatnot, but um, we then did a thing where they had me assemble, uh, they put together a fastball. Um, they they, they uh, laser engraved the blade on the fastball uh, just at the top there, and I'll, I'll show it off and splice something in there. But they had me engrave it. Uh, I'm sorry, they, they had me assemble it right there using their at their assembly station. Let's make sure it's in full work. There you go. Oh, that's helpful. Oh, damn. It's a little torquey. That's a little fast. Gotta get me one of these. Okay, now take your, take your T8, it's going to be too tight now, so take your T8 and yeah. loosen, loosen the T8, not very much, just barely break it free. So the little tab on the tip they explained is to prevent it from being, the tip from being rounded as they're tumbling the blade. Kind of a neat idea. minute slower than their assemblers is supposed to be, but I'm also not a brilliant man. Um, and it took me a second to get everything sent it back up, but uh, and that they specifically said that they didn't put the gem in my logo because I hadn't called the knife a gem. That's, that's some self-awareness right there. I, I appreciated that very much. But so that was kind of cool. But then actually the afternoon turned out to be a little different than I expected. Like I said, I was afraid throughout all of this that this was going to be sort of a, um, I don't know how to put it, but like a sales pitch, right? That they were just going to be trying to sell me that Gerber's the perfect thing ever and that's the only brand. But instead what it turned out to be is like the heads of a bunch of the different divisions at Gerber, including the, the head of Gerber, right? Um, they're, 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 you know, it's a big company, so I think SVP of some variety, but the guy who runs Gerber Gear, um, period, uh, you know, are all there in the room and just talking, and we, we had a good conversation. You know, I, I thought I was going to be able to film some interviews and things like that, but I, and I could have, I'm sure if I'd pressed the issue, but it turned out to be just good organic conversation. And I'll probably, you know, uh, film some a secondary video here that talks a little bit about, more about that down the road, give some of the answers they gave, but honestly... 
I was very impressed again by the candor here. You know, these are people, you know, on the product side, the design side, the manufacturing side, the engineering side, the marketing side, and, you know, high people in the company, like high up, not high. I mean, it's Portland, but to the best of my knowledge. Anyways, I digress. Um, but these were high up people in the company, and they were just speaking frankly about it. And they were wanting frank answers. I mean, I asked them at one point in time, so why the heck did you bring me up here? You know, why pay, why pay to bring a jackass to Gerber? And, you know, they actually just said, you know, honestly, we wanted to have an honest, frank conversation, you know, you know, about what's going on. And so we ended up talking a lot about quality. We talked a lot about, you know, my views on the enthusiast community and, you know, the kinds of things I'm looking for in a knife. Like if I'm, you know, given a hundred dollar knife, how is that different? You know, we talked about, you know, products that we talked about their plans for the future, et cetera. And, you know, I really got the impression from them that, A, they know exactly where they've been. You know, we kept talking about, you know, for instance, the uh, some of their blister pack stuff, some of the bare grills, some of the plasticky stuff that, you know, wasn't very good. We, we all know this, right? This is how Gerber lost a lot of its reputation. And my impression of the place is that the people who did that are no longer there. The men, all of the people in the room there were like under 45 or something like that. A lot of these people were the people who were very low in the company during the time of trouble, so to speak, and have come up and up and up and up. And my impression is that they have now gotten to a point where everybody who was in that domain, who was doing like the short term gains, okay, let's ship more to Walmart, more to Walmart, more to Walmart, blister pack, blister pack. Um, that crew has left the building. And now these are the people who are like, well, crap, now we got to rebuild. And so that was actually very impressive. Um, the other thing that was exciting to me personally, you know, not that I'm, uh, oh my God, fanboy now, but I'm really, I'm excited by how excited they are about this stuff in the pipeline that they can't show me, right? Um, you know, because the fastball, it's a nice knife. I mean, they've got, they, they got to work on the quality issues and my God, did we talk about that? And my God, do I think they are working on it? There's more to life than pretty signs, but I'll be honest, it's a little bit nice to see things like this just randomly posted around their factory. I mean, they seem honestly like, oh, uh, yeah, we're on it, like frustrated with that process, which is exactly the kind of thing I want to see. But they were really freaking psyched about, you know, oh, you know, telling me, oh, this this month and this upcoming year is going to be amazing. You know, oh, we're going to have, oh, boy, they're going to be releases. Like the people who were already pretty happy about some of the stuff they've got now, really sounded like they were super jazzed about stuff coming down the road. I mean, my impression is that their products take a while to get to fruition and that some of the best stuff is yet to come. Again, I haven't handled any of it. I don't know for sure. This is just my reporting what they're saying to me. But honestly, the passion was very real in watching that. I think that was one of the other things is because this is a slow process, not only creating new product, getting it to market, et cetera, but just also the change in strategy. You know, the, kept, the thing they kept saying is, you know, it's hard to turn the battleship around, right? You know, they've been going so hard so far, at, you know, in what I think personally is the wrong direction. You know, the really cheapy, you know, oh, okay, now can we make it for 15 bucks sort of approach. Oh, God, I hate this freaking chair. Um, now they're trying to turn that around and they're having a, well, I think they're, they're just finding that, you know, wow, this really is taking time. I think they're still doing the China stuff. In fact, some of the China stuff is pretty good. I've got a, I've got the flat iron at home on the table. I'd hoped I'd be able to get it filmed before I uh, I left, so there was no question at all. But it's it's a pretty solid little knife, even though it's Chinese made. Um, good design. But anyways, I digress. Um, but my impression is that they're really trying to turn the USA factory into something that they can be proud of as a company and the, the knives coming out of them, and that enthusiasts are really going to like. I'm, I'm, so they seem to be really working hard to pull that around. They, they, they've been fighting for a little while. And the people, at least I was in the room with, who were, unless they were all lying to me and were actually a crew of janitors, which I don't think is the case, by the way. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> um, the, the, the people I was, all, I was talking to were, were the people who feel like organizationally should be in the position to change things. Um, and they were really interested in feedback. They were really asking me things like, you know, okay, when you've been posting about Gerber, what do your followers say? You know, what kind of comments have you been getting on the videos? And, you know, some, certainly some of them have read the comments and whatnot, but, you know, what would you like to see out of Gerber? What do you think is, where do you think the market's going? I know they're doing this research on their own, but I think they just wanted to pick my brain more than anything. They, I left there and then we, um, so we talked about that for a little while. We looked through a bunch of their stuff from the, their uh, from the archives, so to speak. Some of the stuff, you know, like the uh, the, the Paul knife. It 
Okay, this thing's pretty cool. It's a knife that's uh, basically, in order to open it, you actually pinch the pivot and that disengages the lock and then you can kind of open and close it. It's, it's a neat thing. Um, absolutely bizarre. I'd love to see it come back. Cetera, some of the old Mach 2s. Just some really cool stuff that they had kicking around the place in the archive there. And, had, you know, had a dinner with um, Seth, their uh, design lead, and then, um, they, they, oh, God, I'm forgetting his name already. I want to say... Uh, I'm screwing this up already. Either way, the head of Gerber. I'm so sorry, head of Gerber. I've forgotten your name. That sucks. His name is Andrew Gritzbar, Nick. Come on, get with the freaking program. But anyways, long day. Uh, so we had dinner, and then here I am back here. My overall feeling coming out of this is a couple of things. I mean, in practice, they said all the right things. There is really... Uh, there was nothing that was said there that gave me a whole lot of pause. Like, the worst things that were said were just like, yeah, we're working on that, but it's going to take a while. Or, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be slow progress, etc. But my real impression is that the people I was in a room with there were really genuinely trying as hard as they can, as fast as they can, to turn this around, to, to, to really win back the respect that the brand used to have. That's great. However... Actions speak louder than words. Um, my the, the biggest thing, you know, I take away from this a lot of hope, right? I, I, I take away from this thinking like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on Gerber here. I, I'm not going to turn around and say, oh, they're an amazing company. You should buy all this stuff because honestly, that's something they have to earn. And the way that they're going to earn that is by continuing to release products with really great designs. And they're really executed well. And by making it right for quality control issues. It's not, you know, it's one thing everyone's going to have the occasional quality control thing. You need to make it just occasionally. But to also make it right for people, you know, if you send something in for warranty, to send one back that is perfection. We talked a fair amount about kind of that 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 whole experience there. But um, you know, so I, but the way that they're going to prove that, the way that I'm going to feel comfortable saying something like, "Oh, Gerber's back," or "Gerber's coming back," is the, the proof is in the pudding, right? So I want to see them really kicking, well, kicking butt, so to speak. I want to see them actually putting out there product that is consistently good. Product that is well designed, and we're already seeing that uh, the the, uh, the the fastball, the flat iron, those are really good designs. Um, and some of the stuff that they had there is that I saw was really well designed as well. So there were some great designs in the pipeline, but they need to be doing it excellently, and they need to be doing it at prices where it's competitive, etc. The proof is going to be there. So you know, coming away from this, I'm I feel predominantly a few things. One, I'm very happy that I learned a bunch today, even just about the industrial side of things. Like, oh, cool, that's how you can grind these blades in this way. You know, this is how you can grind serrations. I, you know, th that's a really cool thing. You know, grindstones that are themselves turned against other uh, diamond stones to put them into shape. That freaking awesome stuff. So I learned a bunch. That was awesome. But more importantly, I, I walk away from this feeling very hardened. They are asking questions that I consider to be exactly the kinds of questions that I'd want Gerber to be asking of the community generally. And I'm just a small part of the community, and I think they're asking them more widely, too. But they're asking the right questions. They're saying the right things. And the people I talk to, who are actually the people doing things, are doing the right things, at least in their, 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 their words, right? Um, they seem to be making the actions that are seem to be needed to do this. So... I hope very, very much that everything that I heard today is as promising as it sounds. I hope that in two years, in five years, in ten years, we'll be looking back at the Gerber time of troubles and we'll see all of these folks here who are turning this thing around. These will be the crew of people who bring Gerber back to being a really respected knife brand in the community. That would be a great thing, because frankly, I'm cheering for them in the same way I'm cheering for every damn maker out there, and especially folks in the States. That's a beautiful thing, right? So I hope that's what's going to happen here. Um, I'm going to want to see action. I'm going to want to see them shipping them all right every time and making them right if one slips through. I'm going to want to be seeing that. I'm going to want to see continue seeing amazing designs. I want to continue seeing some of the things I'm hearing already. But I walk away from this very hard. I learned a bunch. That's good. I have a... I'm not one to have faith in people, but I think this crew of people, they really impressed me. Um, and so I'm really glad to see who's in charge, who's doing, the, who's in the leadership roles at all of these various positions, because they're very honest, not only with me, but with themselves. And that's, that's the scary part, 
right? If you're having trouble, you don't know you're having trouble, then oh, that trouble's not going anywhere anytime soon. But I, I'm really happy about that. And I, I, they are definitely 100% on my radar. Um, they know that they're still working on things, and I know damn well that they're still working on things, but I'm going to keep an eye. Because if this crew is the people driving the ship, it may yet get back to safety and, in fact, go into very cool waters at some point in the future. So, anyways, those are my first night impressions about this thing. I don't actually know whether I'm going to put this video up or whether I'm just going to use this as reference for myself, you know, talking. But um, that, that's kind of what happened today. I'll, I'll throw some clips around or in or into a different video or something like that uh, from the whole thing. They took video of my doing the disassembly. But, uh, you know, I figured I'd throw my thoughts down now. So, anyways, I hope this is interesting to you and that you have yourself just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Uh, bye now.